Good morning, everyone. This is my first official video, but you can check out my other videos uh, that I've already posted. Uh, one is called Knowledge and one is called Our First Food, and that kind of gives you the premise for where I'm coming from with the information. I just want to teach you some of the things that I've learned because they have really helped me a lot. I know a lot of people who they have helped and just want to share that with you. So um, take it for what it is and I know you'll be blessed by it. The first thing that I want to talk about today is the perfect food. The perfect food is fruit. Why? There are several reasons. First of all, fruit is high on the nutrient de density chart. It's in first place on the nutrient density chart. That means that it has the highest amount of nutrition per calorie. So the highest nutrition, lowest amount of calories. You're getting a nutrient dense, packed full of nutrients food. You're getting the most nutrients for the amount of calories that you are spending. So uh, this makes it a, a super food. The second reason is that fruit is the perfect food is because it is highly digestible. It digests within 20 or 30 minutes. It does not stay in the colon long. It's in and out of your body fairly quickly. Your body hardly has to do anything at all. It's, it's not labor intensive. Your body just, it basically it digests itself, especially when it's very, very ripe. So this is not taxing on your body. It's not taxing on any of your organs. And it it's, makes it a perfect food. Uh, the third reason is because fruit has a high water content and so you're getting a lot of water when you eat uh, fruit. It doesn't replace water. You should still drink water but there's again all that water there. Very high water content and so it's like eating and drinking at the same time. And so you're gonna get your belly really full and it's gonna make you feel full and with very little calories. So it is it is the perfect food. The fourth reason that it's that fruit is the perfect food is because it is sweet. And God gave us a sweet tooth for a reason. It's natural. We have a natural God given sweet tooth. The reason is is because every cell in your body runs off of glucose which is sugar. And given the right sugar, um, this is what is the perfect fuel for your body. So fruit is a carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are sugars. They turn into sugars when they enter your body. Bread does, um, turns into sugar when it enters your body. And these starches, they, that's what they are. They're carbs, they're sugar, and that is the fuel that your body needs. And that's why you crave them so much. <laughs> And you know, we sit down to the table to eat dinner and then what? We still want something sweet afterwards. Well, the reason is, is because we didn't get what we needed when we first sat down. And so this is the perfect fuel for your body. It is actually the very first thing that God gave us whenever we were created. In Ch Genesis chapter 1 verse 29, when God first made these human beings, His creation, these machines that we have, that's the very first thing that He gave them. He gave them fruit, nuts, seeds, and grains. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about that. Uh, the fruits um, are everything that is produced off of the plant. Uh, it is the part that is put forth, uh, the, the blossom. So most of the time we think of our fruits as the sweet things. Not all fruits are the sweet fruits. Uh, your eggplant is a fruit. Uh, you know, cucumbers, squash, zucchini, pumpkin, anything that is produced forth off of the flower, off of the blossom, tomatoes, avocados, olives, you know, anything that is put forth. Um, in the verse, it actually says, uh, I've given you every food, uh, fruit on the tree that bears fruit, that bears seed. Fruit of the tree that bears seed and also uh, every green plant or every herb that bears seed and so that is where we get the grains from so you had your nuts and seeds your fruit and your grains so later came vegetables vegetables came after the curse 
Now a lot of people, you know, don't really like their vegetables, so they, you know, they do feel that it's a curse. <laughs> it's not a curse. But it came after the curse that, that we were allowed to begin eating uh, more than just fruits. But we were actually eating a lot uh, because your root vegetables, you know, the other parts of the plant that are not the blossom, the part where the flower is, it comes off. Uh, whenever we started planting our garden, uh, there was, uh, we had cucumbers and tomatoes and, and squash, and it was really neat to see this plant brought forth actually a little flower. It was a little yellow flower and or a little white flower, and then it falls off, and then here comes the cucumber out of it. It was really neat, or the bell pepper or the tomato. So it is the fruit of the blossom. That is how you know it's a fruit. So pretty much everything is a fruit. I mean, it's the fruit of, you know, it is, the, that it is what's produced, what comes forth. From the plant on the top. Uh, true like vegetables would be everything else which would be like your root vegetables, your potatoes, your carrots, turnips, beets, um, parsnips, uh, tomato, I mean onions, garlic, what's down in the ground, the root part. And then also the stem and the leaves although I don't really think of leaves as vegetables either. I think of them as just greens you know like our turnip greens and collard greens and things like that. He said I'd give you every uh, plant that bears seed. Now that's the other part, seeds. Did you know, which I didn't know and I thought this is very interesting, that seeds, your grains are seeds. When you think of a kernel of wheat, that is a seed. You plant it, you get wheat grass. It is, the, it is a grass seed. Grains are grass seeds. You, um, you take um, the little kernel, call it a kernel of wheat or sometimes they call it wheat berries, and you plant that and you get wheat grass and then you get these kernels of wheat and so wheat is a seed and uh, we don't usually think of it like that I thought that was very interesting oats you know what you make your oatmeal with oats are seeds there's oat grass so it's oat uh, yeah there are oat, se oat seeds they are seeds uh, rice is a seed you take a little piece of rice I was reading up on this a few years ago it's like well I really like rice I'd like to plant some rice and you just take that rice seed and you put it in a bucket of water because it grows in water and here comes this rice plant up and it has more rice on it. It's pretty interesting. So those are seeds. Rice is a seed. Beans, legumes, they are seeds. You know, you take a little bean and you plant it and you get another bean plant with pods and more beans on it. So beans are seeds. Uh, wheat is seeds. Oats are seeds. Corn, corn, the little kernel corn that is the seed they're all seeds you plant that you get more corn so pretty much everything is a seed or fruit and so they weren't just eating what we think of as fruit and seeds they weren't just eating strawberries and sunflower seeds I mean they were eating a lot of things and so I think it's very interesting um, pretty much all of that is uh, everything our body needs to run on uh, it has all the carbs there has some fat in the seeds, see, uh, seeds and nuts have fat, and fat is what your brain is made out of, so you do need that. You don't need nearly as much of that as you do the carbs. It's kind of like when you have a car, you know you need to put gas in it constantly. You need that for fuel, but you don't put oil in it every day. Well, it's the same way with the body. You need lots of carbs, lots of fuel, and not very much you know, of the fat, which is just for maintenance. It, it go, a little bit goes a long way, let's put it that way. And um, in your fruit, a lot of fruit mostly is carbs. Some fruit has protein in it, and uh, some fruit, uh, like a banana, has no fat. Most fruit don't ha does not have any fat in it. Um, so you don't have to worry about getting fat from your fruit. And you're just getting carbs and, and a little bit of protein in some of them. And so, uh, you know, and I just want to say that um, even though fruit is the perfect food, we live in an imperfect world. I understand that. Um, you know, people have allergies to the purest of foods um, because... Our bodies are not perfectly healthy. Nobody's body is perfectly healthy. My body isn't perfectly healthy. But um, in a perfect state, 
in the very beginning, this was the food that God gave us to eat. And so if you have an allergy to something, you might eat it and, you know, you might have a reaction to it. People have allergies to strawberries, you know, pure, pure food. And um, when you're trying to take this pure food and put it into a sick body or a body that's confused or, you know, in a sick state, um, you know, of course things aren't going to, your body's not ready to receive it. Um, but those are just things that I believe can be corrected. I believe that given the body exactly what it needs, uh, that it can repair and heal itself. I do not believe that any food or herb or anything can in itself, in and of itself, heal the body. The body heals itself when given the things that it needs to survive and thrive. Um, so, I hope that that has helped you. Um, to understand that you know fruit is very good for you don't be afraid of fruit don't think that it's gonna make you fat um, actually and if you're a diabetic and you know you have a sugar problem uh, if you go on the west the website of um, the diabetic uh, American Diabetic Association uh, fruit is perfectly fine you can eat fruit um, and it's not going to affect you because it's not like the other sugars out there. It's not like the man-made, the synthetic, isolated sugars um, that have been refined. It's not the same thing. It is the pure form of sugar and it is exactly what your body needs to run on. And it will, if you eat the, the right sugar, it will uh, level your body out, level your system out. Your pancreas will not be overproducing it will be doing exactly what it should. So um, I hope this has helped you and uh, be looking forward to a, a new video each week. I'm going to try to put out a new one every week uh, just sharing with you uh, the things that I have learned. And I know that a lot of people will disagree with this um, because you know you hear all kinds of things. One day you hear one, one thing's good for you and the next day you know it's bad for you. Um, and I just want to say that I don't want to go by all these different opinions. I want to know what the truth is. And I find the truth in God's Word. He's the one that created us. He knows the best way that we're supposed to live and the way that we're supposed to eat and what's the best for us. So that's where I get my information. I don't want to just go by all the things that, you know, all the so-called experts are saying. When you take the Bible in one hand and you take true science, true science in the other hand, they're in perfect harmony together. And how many times have you heard, eat your fruits and vegetables? No one has ever told you, you know, no fruit's bad for you. You've never heard that. That's, that's it's ridiculous. Um, it, is, it is good for you. It's the perfect food. So go get some fruit. Enjoy it. I eat it. Um, as a go-to food, like I said, it's fast, it's quick, it's convenient. It's the original fast food. You just grab it and go. I mean, you don't have to do anything to it. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to really prepare it in any way. You just take a banana, you peel it, you go. You grab an apple, you go. Uh, it's an on-the-go food. It's God made it that way. It's in its own little package, preserved. It's perfect. And so... Uh, just go grab you some fruit and whenever you uh, don't have anything uh, that's, you know, you don't have time to fix anything, you just grab that. If you want a snack, you want something to fill you up, it's very filling. If you eat enough of it and you need to eat a lot of fruit because it's low in calories, so you're going to need to eat a lot of it, more than what you, you're used to. You don't just grab a banana. You, you sit down, you have about four or five bananas, and you fill up on it. That's a meal. Not You know, you eat one banana, you think you've had your fruit, and it's not really really that much. That's only 100 calories in a banana, so that's not enough for a meal. Uh, you need, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred calories. So um, I would just encourage you to um, check it out. Uh, do your own research and, um, and experiment on yourself with it. Uh, fruit is wonderful. It's a wonderful food, and I love it, and um, it's the first thing that we were given to eat, and so I hope that you um, will go get some fruit and make it available. That's the thing. That's the key, keeping it available, having it in the house, 
and keeping it to where it won't go bad. Um, if you keep all of them together in one place, they're going to ripen a lot quicker. And if you keep them spread out, then they, they won't ripen so fast. Uh, fruit and vegetables put off a gas. It's called ethanol. And so they, if they're close to each other, they'll ripen a lot quicker. And if they're spread out apart, they won't ripen as fast. Uh, so you may want to get some fruit like when it's still a little unripe. If you're not going to be using it right away, if you're going to be using it later in the week, you might want to go ahead and get it a little unripe and uh, keep it away from each other or put it close to the other fruit. If you want it to go ahead and ripen in a, in a day or two, it will it'll really ripen pretty quickly. And if you're going to be using it that day, go ahead and get the ripe fruit if you're ready to eat it or ready to use it right then. So I hope this has helped you. I hope you have a great day. And thanks for watching and, and uh, subscribe to my channel so I can put out more videos. God bless.